Welcome to my sorta kitchen. I'm still a chef, you're kinda a chef, and we're really all chefs. And it's been getting hotter lately. Or you could say colder. Because Cole, Cole's kinda feeling a little neglected. You see all the members, all the members, it could be any member, just think of a member of like people, are kinda talking a bit badly about Cole. Cole's just, Cole's just standing there listening to all of them rambling bad things and the coach is like wow what are you trying to say i'm right here are you tr are you threatening me well that's basically what this is gonna be because um <clears throat> according to this article which is called the world's most advanced economies just agreed to end coal use by 2035 wait for wait for dramatic pause with a catch Yes, with a catch. So, the article says, the group of seven nations, I will explain what that is because there's a, definitely a chance that you might not know what that is. I really didn't in the beginning. Announced Tuesday, its member nations would end the use of unabated coal. And unabated coal is coal that's not able to produce low levels of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere by 2035 but left the doors open for countries to stretch that deadline in particular contexts so let's first start with the group of seven kind of sounds a little bit ominous doesn't it now the g7 the group of seven is according to my resources an intergovernmental political and economic forum consisting of seven major advanced economies. So we have Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the UK, and the US. And we also have the European Union as kind of like an unofficial member that also participates. And you see it's, it's a platform for the leaders of these countries to come together and discuss and coordinate these economic policies to address global challenges and basically work together on issues that deal with climate, security, and trade. It has been known for influencing global economic policies. And so, you know, from what I'm understanding, it's not a formal, like it even says it doesn't have a formal institutional structure. It kind of just operates as a place where they can kind of come together and discuss issues that may or may not be going on. And if they agree to collaborate on those issues, then it could really influence everyone. So basically what they're saying is, we don't like coal when it comes to the environment. So you know what? What we should do, we should kick coal out. Coal is for Santa, giving it to naughty children. Coal is not what we want to use. But you see coal, coal is very useful, which goes without saying, has many benefits and uses. Let me just go through my notes a little bit. And you see, the thing is, not only is there a catch, because the article said that there is a big catch, and basically what they're saying is, unabated coal is a big no, but what about abated? Coal that basically produces a low amount of carbon dioxide. Well, as far as I have, you know, researched, Countries that use abated coal and fit underneath the minimum requirements can still use it. And there are even some countries, I think it might be Japan, that are part of the G7 and who are kind of pushing down that deadline. They're like, mm, I see what you're trying to do, but I don't really want to deal with coal right now. Coal is just completely neglected. But you see... Coal is really good for infrastructure since many power generation systems are already designed to use it. So that means there's a well-established infrastructure. And if there's a lot of um, a lot of systems that use coal, then to kind of take that away could prove some difficulty. But here's the important thing. No matter what they decide to do, whether or not countries all agree to go in with this or not, people who are seeing this, and that I guess could be like investors, will see that since these countries will want to stop using it, you know, 
that might make the rise in price. Like they want to capitalize now because they can, I guess, sell and invest it to the members who are still using it. Like, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Take a seat at the kitchen table and make our numbers go up. I, this joke is still gonna keep on going. We need to go past the value of gold in terms of subscribers, likes, things like that. It's a funny joke, but you get what I mean. It's like before the time runs out, you have this opportunity to make profit. And that seems like the wisest course of action to take before you lose out on that opportunity. I don't know, I feel like, you know, it's sometimes with these explanations, I just feel like I'm not saying the right words, but I hope you understand my meaning. Maybe I should use a different example. Like, let's say if we have a bunch of cookies and you know, all these countries, they like these cookies because overall everyone agrees that they're delicious. Everyone likes them. And then you hear that everyone else except you has made this agreement that, you know what? At the end of the year, we don't want to deal with cookies anymore. Or we want, we want low involvement in cookies. Cause you know, cookies are delicious, but they cause you to get fat very easily. They don't really have too many health benefits. So we just don't want to deal with cookies. And so I think the logical thing to do would be like, oh, well, they're soon not gonna be really dealing with cookies. And I guess I'd kind of be the only one left who still wants to deal with cookies. So while well, I have this chance to make negotiations and sell these cookies and give them, I'm gonna take up on that chance. But that could also mean at the end, if there's any countries, you know, who didn't partake in it, then I don't know, maybe the value could also rise because there's lower people. There's like low demand, but there's like a lot of it. Mm, I don't know, you know, and I like to say this, I am not a financial advisor. I'm, you know, an information enthusiast. You know, I find it fascinating to learn all these nifty little things about commodities and, you know, how they have their little struggles and how they really do offer almost this inherent value because, you know, they're just so useful. You can't live without them. So, you know, there's that. But people reading this, whether they realize whether like these countries will go through it or not, people seeing this, will think to themselves, okay, coal is apparently going to be gotten rid of by this date. So I'm gonna put more interest, you know, into this commodity because of that. Like, I don't wanna miss out on this opportunity if there's gonna be some kind of deadline. Like, and if there's gonna be some kind of deadline, I'm thinking people would wanna get rid of it because there's no point in having it if no one's using it. Now, of course, this is like, you already heard that there was a catch. Cause I already know from seeing like the information on the article, there's like a bunch of exceptions and catches and oh, you know, they're saying this, but there's also kind of this exception right here. Like this country's kind of not partaking, no comment. They're not really saying anything about it. So it, it, there's always that, but like, you know, when people see that certainty that's apparently being said that countries are gonna be done with coal, they're gonna think to themselves, oh boy, what's going on with coal? What is going on? Do we need to get rid of it? Do I need to get rid of it before it's too late? What's this deadline? Does that mean I'm only gonna be safe until this deadline? You know, because now they don't really want any uh, coal that could be producing a lot of the carbon dioxide so I want to make sure I just make as much as I can before something happens with it um, I don't know if there's a price difference between abated and unabated coal so I don't really know um, I do know that I mean from coal's value I believe it's been going down at least across these like few months has been mostly going down and it does have a large availability like it's it's a commodity that's in large quantities across you know various parts of the world and um 
it's it's not very expensive especially like when it comes to making energy and when you're comparing to other renewable energy sources um but this could th kind of change just just a little bit that this could really influence and affect everything globally it's, it's pretty neat and interesting it's a finite resource so you already know that there's only going to be so much and i think that there was this issue of coal being in low supply because it can only be mined so much and not even just that but from what i've seen the mining is kind of dangerous it's very hazardous so there's already kind of a like set amount you know like there's not a lot going around in circulation even though there's a large abundance of it which kind of sounds weird I guess I kind of don't know where I'm going with this, but I feel like there's a point I was going to make. Got all this of whatever I just said just now. The main points are that the world of seven, did I say that right? The group of seven, sorry. The group of seven nations is basically saying we want to reduce the amount of coal we use. And reducing that amount could lead to a rise in price for that commodity because it means that less coal is being used. It could also mean that investors might want to try and take profit right now or like up until that deadline. So there might be more coal action. Who knows? It, there's never any certainty, but you never know. It's always good to at least have this in mind. And whatever your thoughts may be, knowing this information could prove beneficial for, you know, just about anything. Now, there was another article I wanted to just go over. It was just about how commodity prices overall are really rising. The article title is called Keep Your Eyes on Commodity Prices Heading Into May. Basically, what it's saying is that there's apparently conclusive evidence showing that we're at this critical juncture where the world simply cannot produce enough essential metals energies and agriculture to meet demand and it's this unprecedented phenomenon that's being dubbed as the shortage of everything so basically what they're saying is due to many political factors like geopolitical tensions in the air um, supply shortages rallies that are due to like one reason or another they're basically saying that there's just so much demand in the world right now for these commodities so much more demand than the supply that just overall commodities seem like they're going to be doing a lot better and you know this could also be due to like financial st instability people want to be sure that they have something of actual value so when there's fiat currency and it's kind of like its value is slowly deprecating is that the right word you know it's value slowly going down as more money is being printed people want to actually put their money into something that's going to have value something that's value has remained at least mostly like the same you know because the commodities offer value that make them the commodities that they are whether it be coffee orange juice sugar wheat gold silver platinum uranium things like that they have value that every country needs. But basically what they're saying is there's not enough of that because there's a finite amount, which gives it its, its value as well. With there being a finite amount of it, it means you don't really have to worry about like a whole bunch being produced anytime. You always know that it's basically up to mother nature. Mother nature and the ability of people to be able to mine and extract these resources that can determine well, that can be factors determining the value of them. Uh, don't mind me. <clears throat> All this warmth is really just tiring me out. I don't know about you. When I get warm, I just, I feel all tired. I can kind of hear my voice. All right. So, also according to this same article, interestingly, a string of U.S. inflation reports during the first three months of 2024 have all come in above estimates. Inflation seems like it's stubbornly remaining, potentially even getting worse. There are talks about being in a recession, like in terms of the U.S. being in a recession, um, the economy slowing down. But let's continue. Let's continue. 
This is fueling concerns that inflation could prove more difficult to conquer than previously thought. On top of that, the article says, economic growth during the first quarter unexpectedly slowed, rising at an annual pace of just 1.6%, the weakest pace of growth since the second quarter of 2022 when the economy contracted. So basically, what I'm getting from all of this is that inflation is stubbornly staying, you know, there's a lot of layoffs, I think, going off um, on people who just can't find jobs because of one reason or another. You know, the prices in certain sectors are remaining quite high, which is posing a problem to everyday living because it costs a lot more. Things are getting more expensive. Um, people hope rate cuts will happen, but if inflation is still staying high, rate cuts aren't going anywhere like it's not gonna happen if it's not like if inflation is in an undesired rate you know and from all that from the turmoil in the economy economy slowing things like that people will think to themselves okay where can i put my money where can i uh have a chance to invest in uh, a place that will basically guarantee I'll have some value. What kind of thing can I put my money into other than this fiat fake currency that actually has value? Where can I, where can I go? And the answer is just commodities. Why? Because they're a necessity. People need them for one reason or another, like gold, gold and silver. Gold has good value. And that's, there's like a reason for that, you know? Industries need it, countries need it. It has a value that hasn't gone away. Um, I'm not too good with history, so I'm not gonna be saying that I know what like nation had their currency backed by it. I think it's like the, the US and stuff, but don't quote me, I'm not really that good with history. But basically, the point is, if nations were using gold to back up their currency, then that's for a reason. Because gold has that value that doesn't go away. And so people realize this and they're like, hmm, I need to put my money into something that actually has value. I can't just trust this fiat currency because it's going down. Because the more it's being printed, the less price it has, the less strength it has. And I don't need that. I don't need that worry. Like with these geopolitical tensions, especially, I think it really opens up people's eyes and makes them fearful. They're fearful of governments, the banks. They don't trust it. So they have to go to something that's trustworthy. And what could be trust more trustworthy than like something that has had good value and keeps having good value because people realize, well, it has value, you know. Again, not saying I'm a financial advisor and um, I'm really just saying my thoughts. They could be good, they could not. You know, I'm just saying what comes to mind. Um, although I could try to do a little bit better at explaining things, but we'll, we'll get there, 100%. But you know, all in all, um, whenever there's financial instability, there definitely seems to be a rise in commodity price. People call it like safe haven asset for a reason, you know, and it is for a reason, um, especially in these growing crazy times with stagflation, stagflation all the way. But you know, so. This is completely off topic, but um, what commodity would you say is your favorite and why? Why? Is it because you like the way it looks? Is it because it's important? You Do you like um, uranium because it's explosive? Do you like gold? I hope you enjoy the meal I presented to you because this could be a uh, filling or not so filling meal depending on what your cup of tea is and speaking of cup of tea I basically just gave you one as a good beverage with that question and I really hope you found this fascinating <laughs>